All right, this is a uh, sort of a half videos, half pictures. Um, taking a little order, this is a, a some of it's current, best I can tell. This picture they sent from the uh, construction crew. That's our foreman there. Uh, he's cutting down a bunch of bananas, and uh, they'll get rid of a few of those trees because they're they're working up next to the house now on some. Uh, Shrimp tanks. Um, and this is of, of people carrying bags of cement and sand and stuff. Uh, they carry them up right next to the mixer. So everything is pre-staged. Uh, you, you can yell at somebody else for the shaky camera work. This is a little girl, you know, grade school. And uh, it's his daughter. And that's uh, the big bunch of green things just flashed by. That's birds of paradise. They grow really well in this rotten land we have. Can't grow a tomato, but you can grow birds of paradise. And um, okra and cassava. And we haven't found anything else that grows other than bananas. Uh, canna lilies grow some. He's out... Uh, to the right there, just coming in out of the picture. That's a slab for the dirty kitchen. Oh, my. Well, the house is in the background. And, uh... I think that's just, uh... Showing we need to do some cleanup around the flowers. We actually have some landscaping in, even though we haven't got any uh, electricity. Okay, now we're getting into what we're, the video's about. Uh, when we cast our uh, walls, we got a door buck in there, and it makes a door with the jam and everything. However, uh, he, he wants to uh, neaten them up and make the... Uh, the the partition of the that sticks out for the jam, uh, just a little wider. So uh, there's going to be several steps to this process. This is render going on now, but there's there'll be other pictures of how they reinforce all this uh, render. We don't we don't just slap render on anything. It's always reinforced. What he's doing now is he's wrapping uh, tie wire around nails that he's. Uh, Drilled four millimeter holes, and then he put three and a half inch in uh, concrete nails into the wall. And now he's wrapping the, the nails with the uh, tie wire. And he'll do this uh, uh, up and down and back and forth in different patterns. But he'll put a, a, a bunch of that before he throws the render up there. Let's see, we need to maybe come up this a little bit. Or maybe... Uh, I don't know if I've adjusted that to where it's... Yeah. Don't know why he wears a hat inside the house, but uh, most of them do. Okay, now he's... Th this is sort of taking in... The pictures are running in reverse. He's driving the nails in now. That shows you about how close they are. They're uh, uh, 8 to 10 centimeters apart. And every place he puts render, he puts the nails in the wire. And that, that includes, like, if you're putting uh, cast-in-place moldings on the edge of the roof or around a window. Uh, this is a... It's not really a, a modern design house. I, I kind of think it's unique in that uh, it doesn't follow any architectural pattern. It's uh, what we want. And uh, we'll eventually name it. it we, the, the house is called Villa Cecilia. But uh, the, whatever style it is, we just haven't bothered putting a name on it yet. We probably will sometime. Okay, now we're, we're now we're backing up to the uh, uh, drilling of the holes. This is a four millimeter concrete bit. Um, uh, three eighth inch. Uh, um, it's a max cell drill. That's a, a brand they sell in the Philippines, made in Germany. Uh, local hardware stores sell them. 
uh, they're becoming available a lot of places. Uh, I'm not sure Ace Hardware has them, but everybody else seems to sell them. They make really good drill bits too, the cobalt drill bits. Um, we like them because they're so reliable. Uh, they're a little less expensive, but they're they're really well made, extremely well made. We've never changed a carbon brush in any of these uh, Maxell tools. Um, whereas, uh, oh, and we've only changed brushes once in the uh, Dewalt screw guns, and they have uh, I don't know ten thousand hours running on them. I mean, we run we run these uh, screw guns just constantly, and uh, we've never had one fail. Not a, not a chuck, not a switch, not a brush. Uh, it's a two. We use a two sixty eight uh, drywall gun and a two seventy two uh, sheet metal uh, screw gun. They run at a different speed, but the other than that, they're identical. Uh, the one of them has a, a, a quick release chuck with no tools, and the other one you have to jerk them out with uh, pliers. And that's what's in the manual. They they expect you to do that. Anyway, he's drilling holes. More drilling holes. Beginning to drill holes. A little closer show, shot of the drill drilling holes. Yeah, we're getting closer yet. I expect it to be a picture from inside the wall looking out at the bit. Uh, nice ergonomics on this drill too. It drills plumb pretty easy. And they're powerful. Uh, I originally bought them because of the motor amps were really good on them. But we've got several things that that company makes. Uh, got a chop saw by them too uh, for cutting metal. Hmm. Whatever that is, it grows well. But uh, somebody will light the place on fire here shortly and burn it all down. So they do that about once a year on us. Burnt the whole place down five times. Oh, okay. Now we're getting to something a uh, little more maybe useful. You see this screen is sort of covering the door. Well, that's the uh, screen that's inside of our render. When you, we re we put uh, reinforcing in anything masonry, including the render. So that's uh, a stuck to the wall with uh, uh, two inch concrete nails, or two and a half. Maybe it's two and a half. Uh, no, I think it's two. Um, it's you put a uh, a washer. Uh, what they call an ordinary nut. That's a 7 16 ordinary nut and a another uh, flat washer. And that sort of captures the corner of the uh, screen and is nailed into the wall into a 4 millimeter hole. What he's doing right now is he's chipping render back uh, to the door jam. You know, when you render, you you have to go past where, you're, where it ends. Otherwise, they'll be all kind of ragged on the edge. So what he's got there is... Uh, um, a Makita uh, hammer drill. Uh, it, it drills and hammers and does all that kind of stuff, sets rivets. Um, but he's got a, a three-quarter inch wide uh, chisel blade in it. And this is that uh, SDS-1 uh, uh, kind of odd-shaped driving bit. It has a ball bearing that rides down the side of the bits and uh, keeps things from rotating if they're not supposed to. But they're very fast to change bits in and out. Just uh, pulls the chuck forward and it falls out. Um, anyway, he's chiseling off uh, concrete to a, a line near where he wants. Probably just a little bit more than the uh, door jam. So that he can come back with, with render after all the nails and wire and all that. But when we do the, when we do the uh, rendering, this uh, two-inch mesh is over the entire surface of the wall. If you try to start it and stop it at all the door openings, it'd be hard to keep it laying flat on the wall. So what we do is we just, you know, wrap it across the entire wall, and then we'll come back uh, after we render and cut it out. And the pieces we cut out get used in, on things like uh, the helical stairs or any place you want to reinforce concrete. Not a bit of it goes to waste. This is one wire gauge uh, up from, from the minimum comes in like three 
maybe four gauges. It's, it's a welded wire mesh. Uh, two by two, like number uh, eight wire or something like that. Um, anyway, he, he's chiseling it back. And what he's looking to do is open up the door opening. Now, we kept the, uh, the wire mesh in place uh, for a while because she was raising uh, white doves for release at weddings inside the house. And uh, it got to be a half inch deep of crap on the floor. You have to scrape it off with a shovel and shovel it up. We just move them to another room while we're cleaning their roost out. They were prolific breeders, but they don't breed back white. So, uh, we had a party and ate most of them. Uh, and they don't know how to find their way home. They get released. They don't come back to where they were living. They just disappear forever. So it's a one-time deal. And, uh, you can see from the size of the chunks on the floor down there that, uh, that, that chisel knocks out pretty big pieces if you wanted to. He also uses that when we have uh, uh, wall forms that weren't uh, specifically lined up. We started out with, with uh, a construction crew that uh, worked uh, as fishermen, and uh, some harvested some kind of a reeds or, or mats and wove it into uh, roofing stuff. Uh, that's where they came from. They had never done construction. But as you can tell, they just step right in there and learn anything. This is some of the smartest people you ever find in the world. Uh, okay, now what you see is he's got an angle grinder. That's also a max cell. We got them in two different sizes. I also have uh, Milwaukee angle grinders. Um, but they have a, a different uh, thread size. Not a problem to get the disc over there. I mean, I, I sent a bunch of discs, but we can buy them at uh, Sky King for $0.22 cent a piece. So, 22 pesos. That's uh, 44 cents. Anyway, he's cutting out the screen. Uh, and then he's going to do the drilling holes and w wrapping wire around it and then render. And he's uh, trying to, to make these uh, jams as slick as the uh, as a skim coat on the outside. Um, back here on onto the left of this picture, there's a couple things going on. One is that wall has not been uh, uh, rendered or skim coated. And that's what it looks like with the uh, two inch wire mesh. The little dark spots, that's the 7 16 uh, ordinary nut with two flat washers that trap the, uh, the screen. That way it's, it, the screen is embedded in the middle of the render uh, rather than pushed up against the wall, which does next to nothing, you know. It's like laying a rebar for a floor right on the dirt. So we have them spaced out. And uh, we tried a couple other things. I tried um, tying tie wire into a fancy little little thing that was that spaced it and, and anchored it. And we used those through the uh, three-quarter inch plastic pipe holes that are in the, uh, uh, from, from, um, from the forms when we poured the wall. Ugh. The whole house is poured concrete, no hollow block in it. Uh, I don't know if I'll use them for for something uh, interior, or anything. I don't. I just don't think we'll probably use them at all. We'll probably just stick with form concrete because they're they've got pretty good at doing the forms. Uh, also, you notice that where that on the left, you see the concrete wall that that stuff's nailed onto. Uh, the reason we're rendering this house, because we didn't know you could get those plastic pipes out. Uh, and ours don't really come out, because we tightened the bolts more than a half a turn on the forms. And it upset them a little bit. And they're not the shape of the hole anymore. They, You know, they're, they're, they're bulged out. And that makes them uh, almost impossible to get out unless you machine them out. So that was our bad. We would not have had to... Uh, uh, render the walls in this house being poured concrete because it's as smooth as you see right there. Uh, and we don't ship concrete to stick render to it. If it won't stick, we put wire mesh. Of course, we put wire mesh everywhere anyway. Uh, the ceilings, of course, uh, trying to stick render on the ceiling would be a joke. I don't, I don't know anybody that's ever done it. He's not successfully. Uh, so we just skim coat the, uh, the concrete. 
The skim coat's meant to stick to stuff like that. It's, it, it, it really bonds. And it's so thin. It, it, it's uh, it's semi-dry 15 minutes after you put it on. If it's going to crack, you have to do it right then. You know, the curing cracks. But we don't have any problem with cracks in the walls or the skim coat or the render. Uh, if, if you, you, you'll, you'll see all these things are rendered uh, all around him. That's been rendered already. That's not the poured concrete. That's render over poured concrete. You know that because he's, he's cutting out the, the welder wire mesh. And also, you don't see the little round uh, orange pipe ends uh, sticking out. So you can tell the render from the poured concrete that way. Uh, also on the left over here, you see, a, looks like a, a maple leaf stuck to the render. What that is, is paint. We tried putting uh, uh, oil-based paint, uh, latex paint, epoxy paint, uh, motor oil, and a bunch of things on the forms for a release agent because we were using regular plywood rather than finoli board when we poured the, the first floor of this house. We didn't know about finoli board. My wife found that later. So it's finoli board is the only way to go. And you wipe it down with WD-40. It's a dry silicon. Dry, it dries dry, but it's a silicon oil. And you put it on the forms and... Uh, they literally fall off. You have to have somebody hold them when you take the last bolt out, especially on a ceiling. You put props underneath of it that are just a dad short, and uh, when you when you uh, when you're ready to when you got all your supports out, you uh, just everybody grabs a prop and runs in a different direction, and it just floats down to the floor. Uh, it comes down really really hard. There's a big bang when it hits the floor, but uh, don't be underneath of it. It weighs more than it looks like. It's three quarters of an inch thick. Oh, let's see. Where were we over here before I back? I backed up to that picture, so I got to find where we were. Okay, he's still chipping render. Oh, uh, grinding, grinding, more grinding, cutting the wire out. Um, I don't know if you can see this right here. Those are that's the frame for a door. It hasn't got uh, the artwork in it. There's another another something here that has got artwork, but uh, that's uh, the frame. It's two pieces of uh, quarter inch thick, well, inch and a half, with some spacers with holes drilled in to bolt it up against something. And that's some more grinding. And he's still grinding. I know that that's not the artwork because there's not there's never a space that's uh, big enough you can poke a small child through to get in to unlock your house. Well, that's our uh, render experiment. Let's change providers here. Or maybe we'll, we'll go back to him. Um, but we'll, this is going to be the same worker. Uh, different guy taking pictures. Well, maybe not. This is... Uh, we're going to start off showing uh, Bia's uh, uh, work area. She's, uh, she's a really smart girl. And uh, reliable. All of them are. We don't have anybody that's the dumbass. This they just don't tend to show up here. They, they look at the at the the I guess the quality of the stuff these guys are doing, and they just don't feel like they they uh, fit, so they don't uh, apply for work. Sometimes you you'll get them on as uh, extra help when you're pouring concrete, and and they get more relaxed, and then they'll come to work for you. We lost three last week. Um, they managed to get through the quarantine line back to the regular jobs. And uh, that's good, is uh, when we hire somebody, we just keep working them because uh, we feel bad about hiring them for one day. But uh, we really can't afford to get to carry crews of 11 and 12 people. Uh, uh, we can afford four to five and still buy some materials. So uh, right now we have six and we have materials for the, for the base of the uh, first shrimp tank. 
This is rebar for uh, basically two uh, shrimp tanks. Uh, she puts the first sort of pretty much painted paint. Uh, there's some miss spots, but it's it's ro all with a paint roller, and uh, she's doing it by herself. We generally had two people. One somebody standing at the end of the sawhorse is rolling the rebars, like three or four to, uh, in a group, and she just runs back and forth and paints it, and uh, those get total coverage. But when she's trying to uh, to hold the paint in the, in the uh, roller and and hope the rebar doesn't flip over while she's halfway down it, you get a few misses. But she's going to uh, paint them, and then she's going to bend them. Uh, and then after the bending, she's going to paint them all again. And they won't be rolling around when they're, once they're bent, once they got an end bent on them. And what you see here... Um, hey, that works. On the uh, little right rightish corner of the thing, you see a bend in the rebars. Now these, she color codes them. So this pink rebar is going to have bends on the second end. Uh, this this goes across the floor of the fish tank and bends up the wall. I don't know if I can... Nope. Yes, we have a gimbal. Just don't know how to use it very well. This is the bend on the second end. Um... There's a minimum bend radius for a rebar, and the bender we have, we made a, a, bend, a, a dedicated bending uh, plate. Uh, it exceeds the uh, minimum bend, so there's no stress in the, in the bars where they're bent. Uh, it's around a uh, two and a half inch schedule 80 pipe, instead of bending it hard around a corner. Um, but she's bending these with a... Uh, um, Hickey bar, and they're all all identical. You know, uh, you lay one on top of the other, and they're actually exactly the same. Okay, now we're gonna have to try to get this to. I think it's more the picture. Huh. Oh, uh, well, now we're inside the septic tank. The round holes on the back wall that you see are air intakes. Uh, they come down over the primary digester uh, and over top of this sort of round top looking little wall we have, we see here. That wall is seven and a half feet uh, from the floor. It's a deep septic tank, a lot of airspace on top. And we have uh, like, uh, I don't know, 20 inches of airspace on top. Um which is it's supposed to be 25 percent the height so it's not really as, uh, as much extreme as it, it seems the form has been slipped up by one bolt hole and they actually had some holes to put the bolts through no they didn't either sorry I don't know why they did that uh, but they're gonna pour a wall that's the same height um, as as the rim of the septic tank the idea, we don't want to splash uh, or have any foam from the uh, uh, floating skim get over top of this wall into chamber three and four. This, this, this is, is the uh, black water uh, digester. Uh, it got enzymes in it. But we don't want any of that, that water to get into the, the later stages of the septic tank. So we're pouring a, a divider wall up. Air can come down either side of that wall and out the other end. There's more of those black holes on both end walls, clear across the end walls. Um, but anyway, there, that's the only place that we have a, a full height divider wall that will go right up to the lid, the roof of the thing. Um, the one that the, pick, the camera's in, that's digester two. It's crosswise, left to right. And that gets the gray water in. The gray water doesn't go into the black water. Black water is all its own. Gray water gets a, a different bacteria. And uh, we call this the T wall. There'll be another uh, uh, piece of wall here to the left. It's just not poured yet. Let me uh, let me pause this. Okay, I tossed up a. Uh, 
a picture of what the septic tank uh, partitions look like. Uh, and, and this is showing the, uh, the, the, the wall here in the middle that they're about to make a little higher. This is the wall we're looking over. We call this the T section because it goes clear across. We just haven't poured that. This other side will be the same height as this side. So we got uh, primary digester. That's enzymes from the bacteria store. You know, for uh, made for septic tanks or formulated for it. And then it goes into here. This is gray water. Gray water comes in these two things. There's two gray water systems, left side of the house and right side of the house. House is round-ish. It's a decagon shape. So it's trying to run uh, 120 feet is bad enough. But to try to run it clear around the house, that'd be worse. Uh, over here we have um, black water in. Uh, a, more black water in. Ones we don't use, we'll just plug up. But, uh, the, and you see here, there's a, like a red pipe, red pipe, red pipe, red, like uh, five or six of those. Those are half height of the, of the water column inside of the uh, digesters so that your sludge doesn't get up to the hole and your skim's all floating above it. So that one, that's a transfer port. It goes into this, comes back, another set of transfer ports. This one here, uh, the bacteria's done all it can do time it gets there. Now we can put chloridine and I chlorine, chlorine pool chemicals, uh, iodine uh, droplets. Just it doesn't take very much, just a very little bit of that. And we can uh, uh, pretty much turn it into something that in an emergency you could drink it. You know, it's uh, it's like New Orleans uh, sewage water. It's cleaner than the uh, groundwater. Uh, Anyway, when it gets done with, oh, this, this gets, uh, glass blocks in the lid so that light gets in there and the UV kills off the bacteria left over from digester two, uh, which is baker's yeast. It's not exactly harmful. I mean, you put yeast in food when you bake it. Anyway, that cleans the water up. Now, this wall here is not as high as anything else. This sets the depth of the water in the whole system. It overflows this wall into this little uh, place in the corner. So uh, um, the height of this wall is just below where these where the water comes in. The bottom edge of this pipe is the uh, top of that wall. It overflows that and in the corner over here there was a five gallon bucket cast into the floor. And under the floor, there's 25 centimeters of three-quarter inch rock. And got a piece of um, polyethylene plastic laying over it to keep the cement out of it. And then the, uh, had an eight-inch floor poured over top of that. Now, this, this 25 centimeter of rock, it goes out to the whatever shape the hole was. You know, uh, I don't know. I suppose it's two feet of work area around this to set forms and stuff because it's down in the ground. And you have to get the forms in, and you have to get the forms back out, and room for people. So the so the gravel gravel bed is probably at least two feet bigger than the septic tank all the way around. You're not allowed to have a leach field in the Philippines. Uh, but what they commonly do is they have uh, uh, after the digester, uh, then they have a second. They have one wall right across. Uh, about 60% of the uh, stuff is digester and 40% the other side. There's no bottom in it over here. And often it's got gravel in it. Um, and that's hopefully the water, well, some of the water will get into the ground because uh, they, they, they pump their septic tanks here because they're not allowed to have leach fields. So what we did, we expanded this gravel bottom up underneath of the rest of the septic tank. I can't see that's a violation of anything. Anyway, that's what we did. Uh, if they don't like it, we'll build another septic tank, I guess. I mean, we haven't had to redo anything so far for them. Um, but anyway, that's that's where we're at. We're making this wall the height of all the rest of it. And we overflow this. There's a, 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 a bottomless bucket here. And if it gets up to, if it doesn't go away as fast as two people can running in there with showers and stuff. It goes out this and goes down into the garden. That's just garden water. Okay, let's uh, go to back to where we was. 
This is the um, site preparation for the first shrimp tank. That's, this is one behind the house, uh, outside of living room. You look out the living room right at the water. Almost as good as this horizon bowl, huh? Maybe not. Uh, I have to clarify that the strings are the forms, clear for, uh, clear the forms, rather than the uh, size of the, uh, the slab we're about to pour. Um, you, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it. There, there's a string, uh, uh, around the outside is the shape. I guess these, I guess those are the, the, the concrete rather than the forms. Cause we never gave them dimensions for the, for the form clear line. So they'll probably, uh, on, on one side, they'll just take out eight inches more dirt past the string and one end. The exact placement is not exact. I mean, it's not critical. It's just a, a hole in the ground. Uh, this is what that looked like before they uh, uh, started to raise the wall. If they would have raised, well, if they had raised it up uh, the second hole to this hole, that's how they poured this wall. So it would have been perfect to height. But they've set the the uh, uh, the spacer bolts right on top of the concrete. So that makes a, uh, their form higher than what they need. And they'll put a... Uh, uh, fishing line from one end to the other and uh, pour it to that. And that's just another way of doing the same thing. Uh, these are uh, guys uh, well it's Benji. That must be Penn Hill. Um, they're, they're moving the uh, this stuff down in preparation for pouring this floor. Uh, the, the mixer's probably... Well, there's the mixer over there. But it may not be there when they pour the floor. They may put it closer to someplace... Uh, closer to the bags. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. You have uh, two sand and three rock. And it's row after row after row of it. Um... And what they'll do is they'll they'll put the mixer over here onto the to the left, uh, uh, six to eight feet away from the ends of the bags. And once they've used up about five feet of bags, they'll just roll the mixer ahead a little bit, so the stuff is ready to dump in the mixer. Uh, we have to cycle it pretty fast because we don't use a dump box, so and we need three mi three minutes of, of run time to to blend the mix. Uh, and they just tilt the mix over and dump it into the buckets. So uh, our dump out time is uh, uh, at least five times longer than dump shoveled out of the dump box uh, into buckets. Um, it's just neater. And we don't have the mixer sitting in a foot of concrete halfway up the, the tires at the end of the day. Uh, this is uh, nearly dug. They're showing us that they've got down to uh, a, a corner. The, the top of this shrimp tank is going to be three feet above the uh, concrete gutter that's around the house. Our, our um, gutters are on grade rather than up at the edge of the roof. We capture all the water that lands on the gutter and the uh, runs down the side of the house into the cistern. Videos on the cistern. It's 37,800 gallon. Uh... This is stepping back a little bit. You can see about the size of the shrimp tank compared to a, a room in the house. Uh, in the background over here is a uh, cistern because it's above the grade. The septic tank is right in here someplace. You can barely see it in the weeds. It's uh, even with the grade. This uh, is going to have a uh, a six inch floor on top of it and it'd be an outdoor bathroom uh, built over top the septic tank we're going to end this video because it's running long um y'all uh say a little prayer today lord wants to hear from you oh the uh septic tank's here <laughs> not over there it's here 
Okay, signing out for now.